Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. We are on chapter 4, text 8. Paritranaya sadhu nam vinashaya chaduskritam dharma samstapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. So Krishna says that he comes by his internal potency, he comes by his supreme will, he comes. Then he said he comes whenever and wherever there is a decline in uh, religious principles, he comes. Then he's also saying that to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. According to Bhagavad Gita, a sadhu, holy man, is a man in Krishna consciousness. A person may appear to be irreligious, but if he has the qualifications of Krishna consciousness wholly and fully, he is to be understood to be a sadhu. And Dushkritam applies to those who do not care for Krishna consciousness. Such miscreants or Dushkritam are described as foolish and the lowest of mankind, even though they may be decorated with mundane education. Whereas a person who is 100% engaged in Krishna consciousness is accepted as a sadhu, even though such a person may be neither learned nor well cultured. So how are we to understand this? Oh, Krishna is coming to annihilate the miscreants and he's coming to deliver the sadhu, the Krishna conscious person. Huh? So what is it? So we can understand that there are two children. There's one, one brother is uh, being mean to the other brother. What does the father do? He'll say, hey, stop it. Cut it out. You know, you both are brothers. Don't do these things. Play peacefully. When he sees the elder brother is bullying the, uh, the younger brother, he, do, he does that. Or he'll say, depends on to what degree the, uh, he's troubling. Or he'll say, go time out. Go sit in a corner for some time. So like that. So it depends. What are we doing? You know, What are we doing? Or what, what, what is our actions? So... As far as the atheistic are concerned, it is not necessary for the Supreme Lord to appear as he is, to destroy them, as he did with the demons Ravan and Kamsa. The Lord has many agents who are quite competent to vanquish demons. But the Lord especially descends to appease his unalloyed devotees who are always harassed by the demoniac. So Krishna comes specifically because of his devotees. They want to be with him. You know, like a child, he wants to be with his father. And so the father will spend more time with him. Another child is always, he doesn't want to be with his father. You know, he say, I can do things by myself. I don't want you. He's trying to pick up fights with his father. Or he's going to, you know, pick up fights with his other brothers. Then the father will... Uh, you know, either give him a scolding or tell him, okay, time out, try to discipline her bit. But there's another child who says, oh, I want to be with you. I want to play with you. Let's play this. How about we play this? So automatically, you know, because father, he loves both. It's not that the father does not love one and loves the other one only. That's the reason he's spending time. No, but it depends on the desire of the child, the nature of the child. So Krishna loves everyone. But then what's our desire? Do we want to be with Krishna? We want to be with him? He, 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 he's uh, very happy to be with us, to have this relationship with us. <clears throat> so the devotees, they want to be with him. They want to have this loving relationship and pastime with him. That's the reason he comes. He comes. The demon harasses the devotee, even though the latter may happen to be his kin. Although Prahlad Maharaj was the son of Hiranyakashipu, he was nonetheless persecuted by his father, although Devki, the mother of Krishna, 
was the sister of Kams. She and her husband Vasudev were persecuted only because Krishna was to be born of them. So Hiranyakashipu, he was, he was doing so many atrocities to his son Prahlad. Why? Because Prahlad was telling Hiranyakashipu, my dear father, I love you very much, but you are not the most powerful. Vishnu is the most powerful. And Hiranyakashipu could not accept that. It's like, no, no, you should pray to me that I'm, uh, that I'm God. Prahlad Maharaj was like, but it's not true. And then, and he was, uh, in, case, in fact, he was telling his father, you know, you also become a devotee. You engage in devotional service. Uh, but uh, Hiranyakashipu got more angry and he was trying to kill Prahlad Maharaj instead. So then what happened? Then Lord Nishingadev came. Lord Nishingadev came. Oh. Don't, don't, don't do this to your son, you know? You're gonna get punished for that. So at the same time, he kills the demons and he protects the devotees. And he wants to have this loving pastime with the devotees. He could kill Hiranyakashipu just by willing it. Just by his will, he could have killed Hiranyakashipu. He doesn't need to come personally. But he wants to have this loving pastime with his, his uh, devotees. And okay, so therefore it is said here that to deliver the de devotee and to vanquish the demon miscreants, the Lord appears in different incarnations. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita of Krishna Das Kaviraj, the following verses, Madhya 20, 263 to 64, summarize these principles of incarnation. Shishti Hetu Ye Murti Prapanche Avatare, Se Ishwara Murti Avatara Namadhare. Maya tita paravyome sabara avasthan vishve avatari dare avataranam. The avatar or incarnation of Godhead descends. The avatar or incarnation of Godhead descends from where? From the kingdom of God for material manifestation. And the particular form of, this, of the personality of Godhead who so descends is called an incarnation or avatar. Such incarnations are situated in the spiritual world, the kingdom of God. When they descend to the material creation, they assume the name avatar. So avatar is, is when one who descends, Lord Krishna descends to this material world. His original forms are there in the Vaikuntha in the Vaikuntha planet, in the spiritual world, in the kingdom of God. These incarnations are eternally there, but they sometimes come to this material world. And when they come, they are called avatar, one who descends, yeah? descends from the uh, spiritual kingdom. So there are various kinds of avatars, such as Purusha avatars, Guna avatars, Leela avatars, Shaktiya Avesh avatars, Manvanta avatar, Manvantara avatar, and Yuga avatar, all appearing on schedule all over the universe. So there are so many different categories of avatars. Purusha avatars, Purusha avatars are the, the Vishnus that are uh, involved in the uh, creation of this material manifestation, Mahavishnu, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, and Shirodakshai Vishnu. Guna avatar. Does anyone know who are the Guna avatars? Shiva, Brahma, the Gunas, the three Gunas. Yeah, and Lord Vishnu. Yeah. Vishnu. And the Leela avatar? Ramji is yeah. a Leela. Narasimha yeah. Dev is also a Leela. Lord Nishingadev, Leela, yeah. Yeah, and then Krishna himself is Leela. Krishna, Leela avatar, is it? Is he not doing the Leela? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they can be more, like they could be in different different categories also. Yeah. More than Krishna is like, Ite Chamsa Kala Pumsa, Krishna is to Bhagavan. Bhagavan, so yeah. yeah. And then we have the Shakti Avesh avatar. You I know, think Naraduni. Hmm? Naraduni is one of the Shaktiyavi. Could be, yeah. 
probably i know and brahma ji brahma ji yeah yeah and even uh, vyasa dev yes yeah even kapil muni kapil muni yes yes and parshuram because they were there for the particular reason right parshuram yeah yeah i think manvantara avatar manvantara is like the, the in different different manvantara like varaha dev and all like he came in this manvantara oh but yeah but yeah. i'm yeah manvantara means the lord comes in every man, in the reign of every manu yeah for his so manvantara avatar and i'm don't like, i think i remember you have given lot of names at that time hansa avatar and Yeah, that's what now I feel. Yeah, there were lots and lots of manvantara avatar and yuga avatar. Every yuga, no, Chitanya Mahaprabhu and like Satyog, Dwapar, Treta, they yeah. come in every yuga. Yeah. So, When he says yuga, 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 yeah. yuga, he dharma sya. Yeah, those are yeah. yuga avatars. Thank you, thank you. So then, ete cha amsa kalapumsa. That there are so many avatars. For expansions, plenary portions, portions of plenary portions, but hmm, Krishna is to Bhagwan Swayam. But Lord Krishna is the primal Lord, the fountainhead of all avatars. All the avatars are coming from Sri Krishna Bhagwan. As there are many, there's one candle which can light so many different different candles. they all have the same light same potency but still there is one original candle and that is shri krishna lord shri krishna descends for the specific purpose of mitigating the anxieties of the pure devotees who are very anxious to see him in his original vrindavan pastimes therefore the prime purpose of krishna of the krishna avatar is to satisfy his unalloyed devotees so we can see that the lord is so kind that there are devotees who want to see him in his original form what does he do in vrindavan they want to see his sham sundar form his original form so he comes himself he comes so that the devotees can take pleasure Oh, he's come. You know, like when we love someone, we want to be with some with them, and then when they come, then we are happy. So like that. So the Lord comes because the devotee devotees want to be with him, and he takes the form in which the devotee wants to see him. You know, that's how kind he is. He says, "Oh, you want to see my original form? I will come in my original form." Then. Like uh, Narad Muni, he had a desire that Jagannath Baladev Subhadra should be worshipped in this form as they are now, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. And so Krishna told him, "Okay, yes, we will come. We will come in this form, and we will be worshipped in that form. We will take on that form." So different forms he's taking as per what the desire of the devotee is. That's how. loving krishna is is fulfilling all our desires the lord says that he incarnates himself in every millennium this indicates that he incarnates also in the age of kali as stated in the shrimad bhagavatam the incarnation in the age of kali is lord chaitanya mahaprabhu who spread the worship of krishna by the sankirtana movement congregational chanting of the holy names and spread krishna consciousness throughout india so yuge yuge he says i come yuge yuge so in kalyuki came as lord chaitanya lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in the 12th canto of shrimad bhagavatam he is mentioned he is mentioned bhagavatam mentions all the avatars and so for a uh, kalyug is mentioned in bhagavatam which was spoken 5000 years ago that lord chaitanya is going to come uh and he is going to uh what is the dharma because he says that i come to reestablish the principle of religion whenever in every yuga i come so he reestablished the principle of religion and that is kali yuga dharma hari naam sankirtan the sankirtan movement chanting the holy names congregational chanting of the holy names means chanting the holy names in the association of devotees 
So he predicted that this culture of Sankirtan would be broadcast all over the world, from town to town and village to village. Lord Chaitanya came, he spread the holy name in India, within India. He didn't travel abroad, but he predicted that in every town and village, the name of Krishna is going to be sung and glorified. And we are seeing now, we are seeing that in the most remote, remote parts of the world that we have the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra going on. So Lord Chaitanya as the incarnation of Krishna, the personality of Godhead is described secretly, but not directly in the confidential parts of the revealed scriptures, such as Upanishads, Mahabharat and Bhagavatam. The devotees of Lord Krishna are very much attracted by the Sankirtana movement of Lord Chaitanya. This avatar of the Lord does not kill the miscreants, but delivers them by his causeless mercy. You know, because if he were to kill the miscreants, all of us were to, would, would be dead by now. But what does he do? His, his mercy, what is his mercy? He's giving us uh, the Hare Krishna mantra. He's giving us love for Krishna. Saying, just chant this. And in that, we are being delivered. We are being delivered. The demon inside us is being reduced. Hmm? So that is the idea, because uh, Lord Nityananda told him, if you're going to kill, then what's going to happen? Your purpose for coming to this Kalyug is going to be spoiled. So you came to deliver everyone. In Kalyug, we have no qualification. We don't have any qualification. And so that's the reason Lord Chaitanya is called the most munificent, most magnanimous. Most magnanimous. We have no qualification, and he's giving us the highest is giving us uh, love of God, love of God. How? He's saying, just chant, chant the Hare Krishna mantra and take this gift. We don't even have to pay anything for it. Just a little bit of faith, just a little bit of faith. Okay, let me begin to chant. That's all. So, get in. Did you want to say anything or add anything? Mm -hmm. No, it's just that the faith is so important, yes. Um, faith is important. Yeah, but you know what? Whether we actively think about it or no, we just have to hear and chant and then everything else follows, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, don't beat yourself down. Oh, I don't have faith. None of us have faith, you know. Mm. We, we don't. We don't. But I think that when we are hearing and chanting, then automatically it comes. Exactly. So that's what. So we just have to continue to hear and chant, you know, and we don't have to think about, oh, oh, I, I don't have, I don't have faith or whatever. Just hear and chant. And then by hearing and chanting, everything, uh, we are going to get everything. We are going to receive everything. You know, just, just begin to hear and chant. That's for, for, for each of every one of us. Yeah. Everything will follow. So we'll stop here for today. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Pemandi, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. So Shla Prabhupada and Shla Lord Chaitanya are very kind, very merciful. Very kind, very merciful. They just say, just, just chant, you know, just encouraging us to chant, to hear. So merciful. Jai, Hare Krishna. <laughs>